You're listening to the oneofus.net podcast network. So I guess I can't get in. I'm, I'm, out. I'm like, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm too scared to see this. Movie. I mean, I tell you, like, with no shame, the <laughs> job they depict, I would, I could not do. I, uh, yeah, I know. I can't say, what am I doing with my life? Jeez. Yeah. I'm, it's geez. like, I, I mean, I'm kind of like, well, the town they depict, I, I'd be like, no, not me either. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, I'm sorry. That's great for those who love that sort of thing. This is not for me. I like uh, cappuccinos, heavy coats, and rosy cheeked woman, as Bill Hicks said. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I mean, that, that town is charming. And, I, yeah. You notice how many black people did you count in that town? Hey, here's the thing. I don't we, remember seeing a single black. Oh, no, there was one working as a door, a door guy at a bar. I will tell yeah. you this. Oh, all right. That's fair. Really. When you're in a rural county, it's never a problem if you're the one. Yeah. It's a problem if y'all start. It, it's a, there are dynamics that come into play when there's more than one. If you're the one, they're like, ah, he's, just leave him alone. I'm just saying, I know that from experience. Well, you're, you're, you're token, if that's the case. Yeah, they, they, they <laughs> I'm sorry to say, like, they you're tend to. You're a curiosity. Yeah, like. Not they, a threat. You're not, yeah, you're not a threat. Yeah. So I mean, it's not a. I'm not saying it's ideal, but that char- that town had some charm. I guess. I mean, there's nothing inherently wrong with this little small towns like this one that that's presented here. Uh, what the hell is the name of this place? Prescott. Uh, Pro- Pre- Prescott. Oh, yeah. No, Yarnell, Arizona. Oh, Yarnell. No, no, yeah. that's well, that's where they. That's oh, that, where, no, I'm that's sorry. Where that's climat- where the, the climactic. Yeah, but wh- wherever it's, in, it's near it. Yeah, yeah, to, thirty yeah. miles away yeah. is what they said. I think. Yeah, like yeah, it's like the type of place where, where like people like raise horses and they yeah. like they they everyone when they go to to go dance at a bar they are all doing the same dance. Yeah, it's, it's actually the really and they're all there. They're all in attendance. Yeah. And it's really nice to actually see a movie like a big budget movie, not something that you know direct to DVD or direct to Netflix that does show you that. Well, yeah. Because, I mean, and look, I watch a lot of movies set in L.A., New York, Tokyo. Just, I, I don't mind that. I, I prefer that, you know, big city stuff. But every now and then, a change of flavor, it's nice to see. Oh, okay. It sort of reminded me, you said it after the movie, it really reminded me a bit of Friday Night Lights. I mean, just not, not only because... You Taylor said Kitchen's that. Name. I didn't say that. Oh, no, no I you said, said that. it first. I, said I didn't that. say it. It was oh, me. Said, okay, yeah. Yeah. I, I've never seen Friday Night Lights. So. Oh my god, I've watched it like three times. It's so good. Yeah, but that's a sports <laughs> movie, and you're a sports guy. No, no, Friday Night Lights the TV series. Oh, so they've only seen, seen the either. movie. Oh, the TV series is so good. Okay, well, sorry. That, it, that's way. what convinced everybody that Taylor Kitsch could act. If you want to know why John Carter happened, you got to watch Friday Night Lights. I'm good. <laughs> he always seemed like, like a homunculus of of, uh, of a uh, uh, Timothy Oil elephant. Like he skimmed yeah. off his side. Yeah. And he's like you're I'm not, not like, quite there. But yeah, to bring it back to the movie since I since I diverted it, I will say that Taylor Kitsch. It seems like he's found his niche. Yeah, as it were, because he he's not a leading man, but he is a very good side player. God love him. He tried. Yeah. You, you can, he ain't going to be Gambit again, that's for sure. <laughs> well, Charming Potato has that one locked yeah, down. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. But uh, <laughs> this story is based on the, the super elite crew of firefighters uh, who, who uh, battled a giant wildfire in Arizona in, in 2013. They got a certain amount of fame from doing that. Here we're following their story, led by Josh Brolin, who's kind of the, the you know the old timer of the group. Thanos. Although man, he's he ain't that old. He's married to Jennifer Connelly, who I'm sorry is still just as I know. perfect as a oh, Greek God. statue as she ever yeah. was. Yeah, yeah. my for- God, woman, I could just stare at your face all day. <laughs> it, it totally. <laughs> who did you pay? Um, I, I confused her for Jordana Brewster for like a like half the movie. What? Do people still remember Jordana Brewster? I do. I, yeah, clearly I do. <laughs> Outside she the was in the Fast and the Furious movies in Annapolis, I think. Yeah. yeah. Oh, and, Annapolis. And the right. faculty. And the, the faculty. She's in the faculty? She's in the, she's fa- in the faculty. The faculty. I've faculty. gotten the faculty. Yeah. Uh, anyway, <laughs> so yeah, there's a bunch of people. Jeff Bridges, kind of the head county fire guy, who comes in, oh, I'm Jeff Bridges. I don't yeah. know, like, I'll yeah. talk with my mouth kind of sideways like this. And but it country. actually made sense and, for this one. It's, well, yeah. Instead of like a... The Golden Compass uh, Kingsman. It's like, uh... but we get to see a little <laughs> bit of all the guys. That, you know, the, some of the guys in the crew. James Badge Dale is kind of like the number two guy uh, in the crew. Really good. Um, Taylor Kitsch is like the new, but not that new guy. He's still technically a, a trainee. He's got a blue hat, 
but yeah. he's been there long <laughs> enough that he he could boss around the other guys, and he's kind of kind of a troublemaker there. Uh, but then the other when we're not focusing on this group of already existing firefighters, it's flashing to the, this guy that Miles Teller plays that we call Donut in the film, who is a total, I presume, crack addict? I'm getting that's what he's Yeah, I think he's, he's a crack addict. I think he's yeah. a fuck up yeah. that happens to do crack. But uh, his <laughs> life has fallen apart, and uh, he's found out that he got this girl who was way too hot for a crack addict to ever have sex with, pregnant, mm. and uh, he's like, realizes that he's hit rock bottom, and decides when there is an opening on this team that he is a uh, firefighter, he is going to go for it. And then the story's fused together, and it's kind of like him trying to prove himself. And I was convinced this was going to fall underneath the category of like, I mean, because it was leading up to it in every way. Like you get the yeah. wormy guy with a with difficult stuff in his past who nobody completely trusts, and then you got like the hero guy. And then the secondary hero guy. Mm -hmm. And you're like, okay, mm -hmm. so clearly the way this is going to go is, like, the guy's going to come in there. No one will trust him at first, but he'll keep fighting his way through until everyone kind of trusts him. And then when the big, uh, the not the big, big fire, but the first big fire happens, he'll do something that, <laughs> that's a mistake. And it'll kill the secondary hero guy. And then everyone will be like, oh, fuck that guy. But then he has to prove himself all over again. And in the end, he finds truth in himself and saves everybody. Yeah. From, and that's not the way this works. No, life not, doesn't yeah. give you a character arc. Yeah. <laughs> like, this isn't life. Doesn't though. Give you, this is this is based on a true story, okay, and is, so was the perfect storm. But that this, doesn't mean that's nah, how you, it you happened. They all go back to the perfect to storm, the, don't they? Well, but my point, so was Fargo. My point, my, my point stands in that you life is going to get in the middle. True or false? The end events happened in real life. Yes. The okay. End events happened. So in real any life. kind of art they might have been building in real life was. It did not get to reach fruition. But it was funny that it felt like they were trying to make you believe that was exactly no, the way it was No, that's what I like about this movie is it plays on, if you don't know movies that well, you're not going to be looking for this. If you do mm -hmm. know movies at all, you're going to be seeing these points and go, it's going to do this, this, and this. Yeah, exactly. And it uses that against you. So you're just <laughs> like, oh, it's going to, oh, it didn't do that at all. Uh, yeah. Well, and, it, it did and it didn't. You know, it gave you a lot of red flags, like, you know, lines like, I'll see you on the other side. Sort well, that's of. That's some shit people say. Well, like, I mean, the time. They... I'll see you on the other side, Elliot. People say that all <laughs> the time. But we know when they say that on the big silver screen what that means. Yeah, I mean, sometimes. You know, yeah, it's like, and there's, mm. a, there's certainly a lot of foreboding for different characters where you're like, oh, this is because I yeah. even Martin leans over here one time because this is when that guy's going to die. And yeah. like, <laughs> and they didn't die. We're like, wow, that was weird. Really thought they were laying out the groundwork there. for Yeah, for, yeah for and they, but they die. do lay the groundwork and then they doesn't come to fruition. So you I was confused. I mean, it's until it, everything happened. It certainly like, helps a lot seeing this film, I suspect, by having no idea what oh, totally. the, the, the details are of this true life story. And if you were planning to see this and you don't know, I recommend not looking into it. Because yeah. honestly, I found the ending, the last 20 minutes of this film, is a solid gut punch. Of, That's where it got uh, me, effect, really. You know, where yeah. you're like, holy shit, I can't believe this movie just fucking went there. Yeah, and yeah. originally I was like, oh, it's sort of latter 49-ish. And I was like... Yeah. Like, oh no! This is this is so much better because it was confidently made. It was you know you had your good characters, you had an arc. It wasn't the some some acting they couldn't. Um, was it Jennifer Connelly? I feel like Jennifer Connelly and Josh Brolin. There was one scene that they didn't quite nail. Really, which scene was the scene one was where that? they're in the barn and the the first their first big fight. Oh, yeah. I, I, thought was, a, I thought that was okay. It's a was... running thing here that like in the story because they spent a lot of time with some of the, some of these characters uh, side like mainly Miles Teller and his whole wants to be a dad to his kid with a woman who wants nothing to do with him, and then with Josh Brolin and Jennifer Connelly who obviously deeply love each other mm -hmm. but are having problems because their relationship has evolved and she's ready to spend more time with them. They're getting older. She's thinking, okay, if we're going to have a kid, this is kind of, we're kind of coming up on yeah. the last opportunity. And he's like, no, I love fires. That's, <laughs> you are my other wife. We had a deal. <laughs> what the hell? That was never part of the deal. <laughs> you know, I, you're, during that, that, their argument where it's like, Dude, we had a deal. I just laughed. I was like, <laughs> you had a deal, yeah. huh? I was like, that, okay. that's how that goes. Isn't that okay. cute? Wow. Did you ever have the whole marriage talk with you? Yeah, it's like, so the whole, like, 
you do know you're always wrong, right? Yeah. It's like, <laughs> you're basically Lando in the situation. Just hope they don't change the deal further. Yeah. <laughs> like, don't, you, there's no leverage there. Yeah. If you, if, <laughs> if you end up just doing the right thing and, and like going along with, with what she says, you might get to fly the Millennium Falcon. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> oh, we've, and then there was a part where he, she, it was something that they, I don't know who they had to do the script writing, but they obviously have been in some horrible fights before. Because there was a part where he goes, she goes, oh, I want to be a mom. And she's like, and he's like, well, you didn't, she's like, he's like, I, you didn't think you were worthy then. What makes you think you're worthy now? And, and it's like, like, ah. You were just like, oh, man, yeah, I know. you are it's not like, good at this. <laughs> yeah. How did you stay married this long? Yeah. <laughs> so, like, little pieces of that, like, they were trying to reach that with, I feel like, with the side stories. But they did so eventually. He, that they scene, did. In the, in the scene of the two of them in the truck. Yeah. I thought it was a really great scene. Oh, really great scene, yeah. That's yeah. the thing is there's some good performances in this thing. On the whole, it manages to, by creating the expectation for a cliche, it manages to skirt around some of the bigger ones. I think it still, to some extent, falls into cliche to it's be sure. unavoidable and it also it's like trying so hard to give it a sense of being realistic that like and it does it feels very real and i hell i learned a lot about what's involved with fi- fighting uh these type of uh, huh. uh brush fires that i had no idea what yeah. you know what with wildfires how what was involved but that being said the movie is 133 minutes long <laughs> and when you're trying that hard to be realistic and to give like these separate character arcs there's large points of this movie that really started to drag for me yeah where i was like okay yeah, i'm sticking, I you're really I, starting to lose me here I, no, for me this would work better as a miniseries really and it's just so, so much just jam-packed in here and you know i mean you feel like you kind of get short shrift with a lot of the characters because spend so much time on just a few mm-hmm. and i'm like these other guys that give us just enough that i feel like this whole thing would have had more resonance if we had known more about more of them and you're right at this long it feels like they wanted to make them like yeah there's know, something... enough like little bits painted to where these are a colorful group of characters that i've got i'll have like i mean lives worth exploring i would have had like more subplots more whatever would have kept me yeah. going more because as it was there's just there's too much that there's not enough there for it's too much and not enough yeah yeah, yeah exactly think, you know mm-hmm. what i think y'all are right because you spend so much time on Brolin and Teller, you could have taken a few of those scenes, cut them, because we we understand that. You could have still had them been the prominent characters, but you could have shown a little bit of the home life of the other characters. Yeah. Just a little bit. Like, because they sort of, what they do archetypes instead of characters for some of them. Like Jeff Bridges. Yeah. It's like, they don't give you any context. And I was, you know, speaking of Jeff Bridges, I was really happy to see Annie McDowell. Haven't seen her in she a has long like time. Says like, three words. <laughs> yeah, they obviously both, uh, both um, uh, Josh Brolin and uh, uh, Jeff Bridges have a type, a similar type. <laughs> 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 you're like, hey, you're our wives. They look a lot alike. Yeah, yeah mm-hmm. except yours is like ten years older. Shut up. <laughs> so are you? <laughs> Probably more than ten years. I, you know, <laughs> thinking about the length of this movie. And it sort of puts something I hadn't been able to to really um, encapsulate before. This movie feels subtly at war with itself in that they they tell you these things through the movie about Brolin's character mm-hmm. and how he views fires and how he, you know, his philosophy on, you know, how to fight a fire and his commitment to fighting that fire. And they give you, it's like, it's like they want to call into question his judgment, but they don't really want to. It's like they want you... It's like a way home conclusion they want you to have. Like, not something you're going to realize while you're watching the movie because you're too wrapped up. They don't want to come out and say it. But when you think about the movie after you see it, there are points where it's like they're calling into question his judgment. Yeah, I mean, it feels Mm -hmm. like it wants the audience to go, like, are they setting us up for a moment where he's going to make the wrong judgment by being Mm -hmm. so confident that his judgment was right in the first place? But I don't feel like it ever really plays that way. No, no, that's what I'm saying. Like, it's trying to be respectful. That's what I'm saying is that war itself is trying to be respectful, but it's trying to show that, hey, maybe the judgment was off. Didn't it sort of do that, though, when, like, early on when he had that evaluation? No, no, exactly. But they don't really... But by because he's cocky, yeah. But, <laughs> but he's also right, yeah. So it's like <laughs> it, it, you know, you got Han Solo who's cocky, yeah, but who's always right. So he's an asshole. So but so what? He gets the results. Not always. That was no cave. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Touché. In fact, altogether, Han actually made a lot of poor decisions. He probably never should have hooked up with the Rebel Alliance, all things considered. Yeah. Like, oh, well, next time. <laughs> yeah, next time. He should have never <laughs> hooked up with Leia. How the Leia. fuck we keep coming back to Star Wars when <laughs> we're talking about this? this for, <laughs> Sorry. The first, no, I mean, you don't have to apologize. It's just amusing. I'm like, wow, that's a weird <laughs> place. Well, because the last Jedi like, trailer came out about a week ago, and yeah. it's been in my head. And then yeah. the new Star Wars uh, spinoff. Tyler title was revealed today, wasn't it? Was? Yeah. Okay, uh, okay, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. okay. Anyway, yeah, so... Yeah. Yeah. But, you no. know, you're watching Josh Brolin, you are thinking, I've only seen this kind of power once before. <laughs> <laughs> um, it did yeah. make me, like, really... Like, I haven't seen him in a movie in a little bit. And it just... I have forgotten just how good he is sometimes. Yeah, he's great. He, he but he is ushering into this phase, new phase of, of his career, I feel, with this role. Isn't he's it? a little like, older. Yeah. Yeah. Like, and uh, he's always, like, occasionally taking these sort of more, you know, middle America country roles that he's really good at. He's one of those guys like mm-hmm. Jeff Bridges. You're like, oh, man, he slips right into that, like, into a comfortable yeah. s- slipper, you know? You believe it. Mm. You, you said middle America, and I want to give this, this movie some praise because it does a great job of... Not going for cheap emotional points. Mm-hmm. There's a point where they just don't do something that would be obvious. That I really appreciated them just getting on with the movie. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I agree and disagree. It's kind of like I kept thinking during this. Thank God this isn't like you know as corny as something like in that way as backdraft. Yeah, but there was a oh point gosh, an yeah. hour and a half in. I was like. Dude, I'm kind of missing backdraft. <laughs> there's, a, there's a reason that you do corny, but they, I just appreciate it because it this movie it really tries to subvert your expectation. And it yeah. does a good job of that, at least to me. It doesn't have to try too hard on the emotional level because of, you know it's just the, the fact that it's I mean it is such a fact based and such a tragedy by itself. It doesn't really need to do much, you know. You know, didn't need to like have those dramatic backdraft sort of moments. Yeah, really. but I miss those moments. Did and it, this type of running length, most talking. of the fires are very underwhelming. The fire sequences, they're just like, okay, well, we fixed that. All right, next thing. And we're like, wow. Okay, so now we're all going to watch them eat barbecue but for But weren't they minutes. like gorgeous to look at? I mean, from I afar, from, abo- from above? Somewhat. I mean, the cinematography is nice, but, mm-hmm. you know. It's, except for the running bear. But yeah, that the, looked terrible. The running running guy fire fire is, but when you're talking about fire action, there's very little yeah. of, of that. Like, yeah. There's not, not much drama in those yeah. things. Mm-hmm. Um, Josh Brolin has a running like dream of watching this f- on-fire bear come out of flaming woods that looks like really bad CG. Yeah, it looks like <laughs> late 90s Babylon 5. It totally does. <laughs> but um, hey, but that had good writing, so let's be clear. Yeah, yeah, except for except for season five, which is not their fault. That's not their fault. <laughs> anyway, let's go to final thoughts before we start talking about fucking Battlestar Galactica or some shit. Worst sci-fi Frank? series of all time. No, it's not. Shut up. <laughs> so not. Um, last last season was, but yeah. The ending ruins everything. Go ahead. <laughs> uh, no, God damn it. Now I'm thinking. Okay, anyways. <laughs> so, uh, so here's how this movie's like crawl. <laughs> <laughs> No, I thought this – I liked this movie way more than I thought I would. I thought it was solid. Um, I I could see where it, you know, purposely tried to tug at the heartstrings. But, you know, I think the story and the guys are so heroic on, in their own that, you know, there is a sort of impending doom all the way through. And, you know, but it still pulls you in. It pulled me in the last act. And, um, you know, it, it had me. You know, I know a lot of people that like to see this, you know. Um, I just, I, yeah, I wish. Pull it together, Frank. What I know. I wish. I wish this could be like. I want this to be better. I mean, I want. It, yeah. I want my reaction for you know to be like stronger. But it's it's it was just good. It was just good. Yeah. You know, it was fine. I'll give it a solid seven out of ten. Um, you know, Jeff Bridges cowboy hats. There you go. It was, yeah, Elliot. Yeah, I. <laughs> I didn't even second now. What other sci fi thing could I say? Well, I, mean, I, I appreciate <laughs> that, but honestly, like I'm actually trying not to cry thinking about this movie. Oh my god. Wow, okay. It, I'm I'm not it's trying like to in You make Tron. me feel like I'm, I'm cold not trying or something. To, I, it's like I'm, in John when, I, I, when I, if you just if you stop, <laughs> I will get, like if, if if y'all stop, I will give you the nerd reference that's real. Okay. That's this it's it's a shame I'm gonna call you out if it's like wow, no, way it's, totally it, off. It's no, I'm just I'm telling you from my life. Okay. The only movie I have cried in in my life has been Free Willy. Really? Like I just I just just follow me. <laughs> I was like 8. And like for some reason it hit me really this movie hit me just as hard as that. And I was little. Wow. And I'm just saying like 
for a movie to do that to me, which does, I, normally I can be like, ah, whatever, it's just movie, whatever. But this one hit me, and it I do wish it was better. Yeah, I wish some choices that they made, they made some different choices. Mm. But with the effect that it had on me, I can't give it in my. I can't give it and be fair to it. Less than eight grizzly bears out of ten. On okay. fire. On fire. Like yeah. eight, eight flaming grizzly bears. <laughs> <Yeah>. Roar. <laughs> <laughs> I knew you were going there. As soon as you said, like, <laughs> like I just like, exit stage left even. Uh, exactly. Free Willy. A little snaggle puss for you. I'll tell you so. the best. Listen, I, I cry at Poltergeist. So, I mean. I cry at the, at the Incredibles. So, you know, whatever. Okay. Yeah. I, hey. I think it was something about they wouldn't let him go. And I got up the, I got up the next day and I wrote a letter to President Clinton. <laughs> Oh my God! <laughs> Got a response. <laughs> Did you really? Yes. It, it oh. was all tear stained. It was you know, tear stained. Like I cried at that part too. I'm every not kidding. Time. It was. Uh, I was like, that movie just makes me want seafood. Um, oh. Anyway, yeah. No, I, I feel like they spent so much time and effort trying to make sure this movie was doing the right amount of like respect for these heroes, mm-hmm. honest mm-hmm. to God heroes, that they were so like much trying to couch it in a feeling of realism that they forgot to give it a sense of real drama and ur- or any kind of Make urgency it cinematic. during the length of it. It just kind of is there. They didn't yeah. adapt it enough. You're like, yeah, it's like, you're still making a movie. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I kind of feel like I need a little bit more movie. Now, I realize that <clears throat> part of that is that this is, like I said, this is a but culture that I just don't have many identification points with. I'm like, I'm not really sure I want to spend two hours hanging out with all these guys, you know? <laughs> like, I don't want to go to shit kicker bars. <laughs> I don't want to go to church picnics, <laughs> you know? And that's fine. That's not a diss on those things. It's just that's it's not, not my It's not culture. for you. It's, it's not, not for, for me. Yeah. Um, these, like, it felt like there's really only two other drama points in this whole thing, and we've discussed him. It's Miles Teller mm-hmm. wanting to, like, be a father to his child, which is cleared up almost immediately. Like, they really, like, you're not even at the halfway point before that's no longer a dramatic point in the film. Yeah. And no. then there's the, every once in a blue moon, we get a minute and a half or so of Brolin and, and Jennifer Connelly yeah. having a little spat that's almost immediately resolved. And I was like, okay... So there's no other real drama here other than the uh, this idea that, like, this is a dangerous job. And maybe that would have more impact if, like, there had been something, and like I said, speakly dramatically, obviously it's based on a real story. They, because of respect, they don't want to change the story too much. If another character had died somewhere in the middle of it, it felt like it would mm-hmm. have been more of a, okay, now I'm feeling unsafe. But I never felt unsafe in this. Yeah. and. And I honestly, maybe this was really made for people who are really familiar with the story. I don't know, mm. but uh, I did think this was it's 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 a decently made film that it's hard to say anything specifically wrong is wrong with it, except it tries too hard to be respectful and doesn't try hard enough to be a movie. Um, you think it tries yeah. hard to please everybody? I, no, yeah, because I wasn't pleased. No. <laughs> I, I, well, you know, yeah. you, I, I actually agree with all your points. I just. I'm really happy it didn't drift into Hallmark movie land. No, it didn't. It, no, it, it could have, it, but it, it, it could have it, slowly, yeah. it danced around the fringes of it, it but did. it, but it never went whole hog, yeah. but it never uh, went full Hallmark. Yeah. It never went full Hallmark. You never go full, full. Hallmark ever. <laughs> um, You're such a card. Blind mean, side, yeah, blind side. Uh, but I give it, oh, that movie's gonna... I give it uh <laughs> five and a half out of 10 Whoa. donuts. Because <laughs> now I just want that's what I got out of this Did anybody movie. get like, why they oh, called him? Oh, I didn't donuts. get why that. He called no, him. I feel like someone mentioned it early on, and I don't yeah, know. I missed it Maybe that was a deleted yeah. scene. I don't know. In the extended cut. In the extended <laughs> cut, he's like sitting there, they catch him. Rom, 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 Maybe they were just jelly. It's what? I went to Austin. You guys ever been to Gordo's? These fucking things are amazing. <laughs> I'm glad you said Gordo's and not Voodoo Donuts. They're not from Austin. <laughs> and they're overrated. I, no, they, they're not. I had some Voodoo Donuts, and I was like, these are really good donuts. I don't understand why people think they're better than Gordo's, though. Thank That's you. for goddamn sure. I, they're not even better than Shipley's. They're fun. I'd say they're, they're about fun. the same level as Shipley's. Yes, but people don't line up for Shipley's. They, yeah, they do in some places. Yeah, that's true. But you remember when Krispy Kreme first came here, people were lining up for that shit. It was like, people, have you seriously never been to a Krispy Kreme? Oh. It's literally just, it's Dunkin' Donuts. It's, yeah. a, oh. it's a fucking, the only difference is you can get them hot off the glaze thing, you know? <laughs> now they're actually 7 now. I'm not sure which is worse. That's going off into Star Wars or going off on donut shops. Well, I had donuts this morning, so that's why I'm thinking about oh, it. Oh, God damn it. Now I want donuts. <laughs> What 
Us.net has been your one-stop shop for all things geek for years. But there's a side to them many of you have never heard. The subscription side. Subscribe and listen to great podcasts like The Breakfast Pub, The Original Gentleman, and the Watch a Movie With Us series. Head on over to oneofus.net and don't forget your towel.